Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Man, it doesn't show signs of stopping. And I brought me some corn for popping. The lights are turned away down low. Long running TV anime often have several movie outings. But it's weird when they're based on a side story from the manga, and without Ikuhara at the helm, who knows what to make of it? In the name of the moon, I'll punish it! Hiya! I'm Michael Fitzgibbon, and I'm a 35-year-old anime reviewer. I'm a Leo with blood type red, my birthstone's kidney stones, and I'm almost entirely useless. Some people might say that I'm also a budding sociopath. One day I decided I want to make videos that would constantly get flagged by overzealous rights holders, making another in a long line of poor life decisions. What am I doing with my life? Sailor Moon S. The Movie Out that a window at that My star. My sister will be suspicious. Gosh, your lips look delicious. My brother will be there at Like the waves upon a tropical shore. My maiden aunt... Hiya! Pee with Truth here, and Merry Christmas! Or whatever winter holiday you choose to overspend for. I was just reading a classic here, and... Okay, it's just a hardbound volume of gruesome crime scene photos. The only thing that gets my motor running now. Anyway, welcome to Attack Revolution! As I'm sure you can tell, I've rented out this special space for what I'm sure will go down as a classic. Like the Judy Garland Christmas special, the Andy Williams Christmas show, or that episode of Leave it to Beaver where Ward got drunk on Nog and picked a fist fight with Eddie Haskell. Man, the censors skew with the network over that one. First time people ever saw an unstaged beating on TV. Hugh Beaumont was almost arrested. True story. But tonight we're not here to poorly recall 1950s television or absent enthused hallucinations we've had of it. No, we're here in the warmth of this hearth and home to look at Sailor Moon S. The Movie. And, hey, put away those tissues and lotion. We're not looking for that reason. This is the holidays, you fucking profligates. Try to control yourself until the commercial break. Sailor Moon S. The Movie, sometimes called Hearts and Ice, is the second in the franchise, and is based on a short story by Naoko Takeuchi for the original manga. It was directed by Hiroki Shibata, who's done a lot of work in various anime, but it's not Kunihiko Ikahara. I mean, that's no slight against him, it's just that... I mean, come on, Ikahara directed all the best Sailor Moon stuff. Anyway, since the whole thing is only about an hour long... I figure I'll just run through the whole plot. It's not one of those things you can dissect for its themes and character development. There's only a couple of characters in this movie that do anything, despite the sizable supporting cast they still put into it. Our story begins with a strange object hurtling through space towards Earth and... Wait, did I switch on the previous Sailor Moon movie? I'm pretty sure that's how the first one began. Hmm. Apparently, this astronomer, Kakuru, spots the object and races to where it crashes, finding a shiny space rock while ominous music plays. I'm guessing that it isn't a crystal gem that got poofed. The opening credits see our merry band of gal pals hitting the shopping district, mostly just messing around, with Usagi, yes I'm using her Japanese name, stuffing her face. The gang winds down in front of a large city screen broadcasting a story about an upcoming shuttle launch to the moon. Naturally, our bun-headed blonde finds taking a trip to the moon, something she's already done, mind you, a novel experience. But since it's her talking cat Luna's job to take a dump in her punch bowl, she reminds her that she should be studying for high school entrance exams. I don't expect you to understand my feelings. After all, I bet you've never experienced love before, have you? Aww. It's not like I even plan to fall in love, so who cares? Are you alright, Luna? I think I might have caught a cold last night. Achoo! Luna underestimates the severity of her sickness and is nearly made roadkill, but the same astronomer guy from before dives in the street to rescue her and nurses her back to health at his home. 
Luna is astonished that this absolute stranger took care of her the whole night. Kakaru is visited by Himiko, an astronaut preparing to go on that moon mission. He relays to her about the object he spotted, showing her the gem, but she hesitates to believe him as he's been ostracized by the scientific community for insane ramblings about some kind of princess on the moon, Princess Kaguya, based on the tale of the bamboo cutter. After spending some time hanging out with Kakaru, Luna begins to feel strangely about him, almost as if she was attracted to him. But there's no time for love because the movie's villain, this ice bitch, summons her ice minions who take to freezing over town. Naturally, this means it's time for transformation sequences! For like, four minutes. Seriously. They are really padding this thing out. Though I have to admit the transformations and attack sequences are a guilty pleasure. Very guilty. We're the pretty guardians who fight for love and for justice. Also, can't that little pink spore get her own material? Don't photobomb your future mama's routine! You're not even useful in a fight! Usagi's not faring too well herself, being immediately made dizzy by circling images, then dropping her wand when taken off guard. But speaking of useless in a fight, here comes... Uh... Santa Claus? Merry Christmas! And a Happy New Year! The winter is harsh in a snow-driven northern land. However, the only ones who should be allowed to accentuate this winter landscape are lovers. After, uh, temporarily inconveniencing that ice demon, he basically stands there while Sailor Moon does all the real work, using her... Moon Heart Spiral Attack? Which obliterates it, returning the frozen people back to normal. But unfortunately, that weird-looking gem is giving Kakaru the Ajita, worrying Luna. Our feline friend wanders around wishing she were a human so she could take care of Kakeru, spotting Usagi and Mamoru kissing and feeling jealous. That night, she even asks Usagi what kissing is like and later visits her rescuer. Even though there's no sign Kakeru is romantically interested in this talking cat, it's still kind of unsettling. Because Luna is so thirsty! Girl, you're a cat. And you just met him. And also, you're a cat. I don't think he wants pussy that badly. Ah, oh, come on! You know that was inevitable. Yeah, that would have been a total catastrophe. <laughs> but I'm feeling much better, meow. <laughs> eh? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Okay, that's enough. Wait, I've been coming up with cat jokes all morning. You guys, I'm feline fun. Everything's perfect! Come on! I'm just kidding around! Will Luna be able to help her crush? Will the Sailor Guardians be able to defeat the Ice Bitch? Will the other girls actually be relevant to the plot? Find out after we get back. I don't think there are actual commercials, so, uh, just get a sandwich, I guess? I suggest Meatball Parm. A hastily prepared Otaku Evolution Christmas is brought to you by the Silver Crystal Exchange, the number one gen based MacGuffin dealer. Jewel encrusted wands, magical scepters, interdimensional doodads that space emperors desire, and more. Not associated with the Great Diamond Authority. We'll be back after. Well, we'll be back in a few moments. And now we return to a hastily prepared Otaku Evolution Christmas with your host, Penguin Tree. And so I woke up and the bed was soaked! I had one of the ensigns sniff it and I'm pretty sure it was just sweat. At least, I hope so. Because if that dream made me... Oh, hey! Uh, didn't, uh... Didn't know we'd, uh... We'd come back. <coughs> Hey, how about this Sailor Moon S movie, huh? I don't know, I think by the end we'll all be catatonic. <laughs> <clears throat> the girl
girls commiserate over Luna's odd behavior, with the consensus being that she's actually in love. This greatly upsets Artemis, the other magical talking cat who, well, Luna's pretty much the only potential romantic partner for him, so he's bummed out. It seems like everyone but Osagi is single, because they wistfully pine to have romance in their lives too. I guess Usagi is just lucky that a college student is into a middle schooler. Hey, to look at me, I didn't fucking write Sailor Moon. Meanwhile, the Outer Guardians, our favorite lesbians in their favorite third wheel, are actually ruminating on the threat of the Ice Bitch. You know, doing their jobs as guardians, unlike the main five. But since the movie refuses to let them be relevant, this is just more padding. Why is it that what are probably the most interesting characters get shortchanged? Anyway, Himiko pays Kakaru another visit, but he shoots her down, citing their very different lives and the fact that he's kind of, you know, a raving maniac. She runs off crying, leaving him to his memories and craziness. But Luna sees that he's at least partially forcing himself, trying to let Himiko stop worrying about him. In a strangely tender scene, Luna admits to Usagi, who followed her, that while she loves Kakeru, it's clearly Himiko that he was meant for. But honestly, for a moment I thought Kakeru could have been the person I was meant to be with. Like it was fate. <sighs> However, the one he was truly meant for wasn't me after all. <sighs> I wish I could magically become a human, if that happened, then I could stay by his side as a person instead of a cat. But just then, the space rock is discovered by Ice Bitch, who needs it to help her freeze over the world. Why she didn't have it with her to begin with is beyond me. She really should keep track of her stuff. Anyway, this isn't good for Kakuru's health, or mindset, because soon he's ranting about her being Princess Kaguya. She pieces out so she can start chilling the world, which is reported on the news. Ice Bitch Kaguya creates herself a big old ice mountain in the ocean, and her minions freeze people all over. But she's confronted by the Outer Guardians, first on the scene, as if they were actually going to be contributing whatsoever to the defeat of the villain. Well, they still look cool calling out their attacks. Honestly, just make the movie about these three. They're the best Guardians that aren't Minako. The main five show up, minus Usagi, and get beaten around until she does. I don't know why they're surprised to see her, they fucking called her. And then she delivers a speech that... Just listen. Listen, we fall in love and sometimes our hearts get broken. <gasps> hey, man. Kakeru. And there are times when that heartache keeps us up at night. In our lives, we experience sadness and all kinds of hardships. But in the end, it's those things that make us feel alive! What? Ice Bitch is rightfully confused as shit because Usagi is talking about Luna and Kakaru, and Ice Bitch isn't in on that part of the plot, so she thinks Usagi is an idiot. But Dummy Bunny keeps lecturing her about love, which, again, has nothing to do with Ice Bitch's motivation, so it just sounds like she's ranting crazily. Like Mina Loveberry. Hello, Mina. Hello. What are you doing on Earth? I'm on vacation. Doctor's orders. Well, what, what are you, you going to do on your vacation? I will let the soul be my guide and wander off to the depths of this unseen planet. Wow. That's what you say when you've lost your marbles. What? Let's see. Cartoon Network show? Check. Disney Channel show? Check. Hmm, I wonder if I can fit in a Loud House reference and get the trifecta. But I haven't watched that yet. Ah, well, next year. Well, Usagi isn't just super crazy, she's super powered. She activates her, um, uh, goblet dealy and transforms into a butterfly. Like you do. But once she attacks with her super mega ultra star beam or whatever, she's overpowered. Ooh, that's going on the blooper reel. Since her goblet isn't effective, Sailor Moon summons the Silver Crystal, which doesn't look as cool as it did in the previous movie with its flower design. Her allies circle around her to protect her, joining hands to combine their strength. 
They do this thing that's, well, really pretty, but also kind of bullshit. Sort of Sailor Moon in a nutshell. Creating a barrier that the ice minions can't penetrate. That ice bitch fires her Kamehame Senko Sapo, which the Guardians counter. So yeah, beam struggle. After obliterating the ice bit, Sailor Moon makes a wish that Luna may be able to become a human for just one night to become Kakaru's Princess Kaguya. And, uh, apparently the Silver Crystal also grants random wishes, because that's exactly what happens. Luna transforms into... kind of a hottie, to be honest. Princess Kaguya. Princess Kaguya? To tell us no of where to go or say we're only dreaming. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. Hmm. No, not Christmassy enough. Let's try this. We're walking in the Yeah, that'll do. Human Luna tells Kakaru that the one he really belongs with is, uh... Uh, Himiko. Right, Himiko. And as he comes to in the snowy city, everything starts to return to normal, with Luna nowhere to be found. Well, the movie wraps up with Himiko returning from her trip to the moon, Kakaru meeting her at the airport as she returns, and the two reconciling. Usagi and Luna watch from a distance, with Luna happy for them. But hey, Artemis catches her on the rebound. You're her silver medal, Artemis. Ah, settling. The end. And that was Sailor Moon S the movie, and man, it was a Christmas classic. What with, uh, the snow, and Santa, and... Wait, why did I review this for Christmas again? This was barely Christmas related, and it wasn't even that good. Okay, so this feature was pretty much a lot of fluff. There wasn't any real plot or thematic dimension to it, most of the characters were just there, and the villain was one note. Even the direction was pretty lackluster compared to the first film. However, there's a bit of candy-coated charm to it. And I did end up sympathizing with Luna with her unrequited love. That can be a real bitch. Sailor Moon as the movie is hardly the best anime movie, or even one of the best parts of Sailor Moon as a whole. But no matter what a trifle it was, it had an uncanny sincerity to it. Occasionally, like with Christmas itself, you just need comfort. And that's what this is. Comfort. That wraps up this year's Christmas episode, folks. As usual, it was a blast to put together. These are some of my favorite videos. I'll probably end up having to do another grab bag next year, but I thought I'd give this its shot while the new English dub was hitting the scene. Go out and buy it from Viz Media if it interests you. As always, have the happiest holiday season. There's still one more episode for this year, so come back for my year-end English dub review. Until then, see ya! What? Being in love is neat! 
but you should probably stay within your species. This isn't Yuri Kuma or Rashi, folks. Animals can't consent. And it's gross thinking about Luna getting beefed by a human being. Maybe human Luna would be alright. She can get it. Also, middle schoolers are too young. Probably. Penguin Truth says... What?